Hello and welcome to The German Guy Reviews. I'm The German Guy. Comedians love to create characters. If it's Mike Myers with Austin Powers or Brandon Rogers with his insane businesswoman and very British series, or my personal favorite, Dave Chappelle as the guy who doesn't know what he's talking about. Hilarious. But what this does, very practically, is that it gives the actor the opportunity to try out new things. If they don't work, well, he can just discard them quickly. But more important than that, it prevents the person in question from becoming stale and one note. Or the third option, timeless classic. And so I like to introduce you to Drill Instructor Schmidt. He's an invention by Holger Müller. The idea? Everyone's nightmare of a military superior turned up to 20. There are still shows with him, and really most of those we often think of as news from yesterday still stick around to some degree, but I do feel that he isn't as present anymore as he used to be. Granted, I have stopped watching TV over 15 years ago, so it's hard for me to judge what is and is not mainstream at the moment. But one way I can try and make a judgment is by looking into the German movie scene. Because it always happens time and again that I see faces, even if it's just in the background, of people that I already know since the early and late 90s. Instructor Schmidt is not to be seen. But that could also be that there aren't that many instances where you need someone for the role of insane possible war criminal. Be that as it may, we have a movie to look at, with him as the star. This is... Good morning, you pussies! So we begin the film with Herr Schmidt having a dream of a great war, when he suddenly decides to jump out of the helicopter without a parachute. Cause those are for liberals. You thinking what I'm thinking, partner? Aim for the bushes. His dream turns into a nightmare as his radio begins to play a song telling the world that peace is pretty dope, yo. Of course, all of us red-pilled alpha male philosophers would like to disagree. For we know a man is only a man when he goes to war and dies pointlessly. But for a few seconds, he gets to look like an enemy protagonist. And is that not better than living your life in luxury as a beta male? No, it isn't. It really isn't. You were drawn into a deranged cold when you were 16 and insecure. Anyway, Schmidt goes to work at a military base, where it's like full metal jacket, but on amphetamines. You are gonna bet your ass this time we are gonna win at Stalingrad. No, I'm not paying for winter clothes. Also, Herr Schmidt makes a big speech to his men and for the silent majority. And the stuff he says is pretty offensive. But if you know me, I'm pretty resilient to the stuff and can laugh freely without feeling guilty. And if I may speak freely for a moment, it is frankly really annoying to me that people have lost the ability to think any more deeply about anything and follow their first knee-jerk reaction. There is no irony, no sarcasm, there are no layers. Instructor Schmidt is a character. He plays a role. That is what an actor does. And look, I get it. Many people these days use comedy as an excuse to their real bigotry. Which is why, for example, Steven Crowder is not funny. Not because his jokes are racist, but because he's not making any jokes in the first place. These are, for the most part, his genuine beliefs. 
I once heard a certain YouTuber, which I'm not gonna say which, cause I don't want to start any unnecessary drama, say the words, a joke is an expression of things someone already believes. Which, that's only half true. There are three kinds of versions of racist, sexist, etc. kinds of jokes. The first one I already mentioned, which is the kind that hides the fact that you are actually do believe these things to be true. The second ones are the schoolyard versions, the South Park kind of way. Which is to say, <laughs> you are not supposed to say that, but you don't actually believe it. It's very depressing when you can't make honest cultural commentary without having to disavow the assumption that your feelings are motivated by an irrational hate trigger response to different levels of melanin. You know what? A society where anyone can make jokes about anyone else and everyone laughs is a truly tolerant society. Political correctness charged censorship only serves to engender resentment and distance between social groups. Or the third version, the intellectual version. An exercise in overcoming preconceived notions of the world by deconstructing bigotry. One of my all-time favorite comedians, Zerda Zomunchu, did this brilliantly, where he said on stage the most horrible things imaginable, things that would make 4chan blush. But the twist was that not the people he was ranting about were the butt of the joke, but he was. Because when you were watching him for long enough, you get a distinct thought inside your head. Wow. These racists are a bunch of angry, pathetic morons. And so it is here. The offensive language is very often a means to an end. In this case, it's to show who Instructor Schmidt is. As an idiot. And so I have to ask, are people really so far gone into their own ideological bubble these days that they can't distinguish anymore between depicting something and agreeing with it? After he is finished with his anti vogue speech, we see that the military is making preparations. The reason? A while ago there was a civil war in a foreign country. The king of that country almost was overthrown by his evil twin brother, who was born two minutes later and thus had no right to the throne. But with the help of the United Nations, the worst was averted. Now the king will come to an official signing of the papers that make him the ruler of his country again, and the UN needs a place with a well-trained military to prevent any terrorist attacks. And you pick Germany for that? A high-ranking lady called Gundula will make sure everything runs accordingly, and has turned the base into Agent Smith Central. But we're fugitives! We should just lay low till we get to Seattle! Hey everybody, I found one! The government actually found someone we're looking for! Yeah, baby, yeah! Meanwhile, Schmidt has found a new toy to play with, a recruit by the name Rainer Zelensky. And it just so happens that the general of the base has a special mission for these two, far, far away from the king and his wife. And you guessed it, this was actually just a ruse to get rid of the two worst soldiers in the army stronghold. As the two guys fool around, they knock out two other armed men who are guards of the king, but they think are terrorists. Because they have more melanin in their skin. They return to the base and basically launch a war against their own country. It only used to look worse in 45. Gundula demands to know what is going on and Schmidt loves off the idea that a woman could run anything and tells her to go back to the kitchen. <laughs> Based? The wife of the king gets into the car of our heroes and wants them to take her away from here. A wild chase across the countryside begins. She later explains that her husband is not her real husband. I always wondered about this type of plan in movies. Like, if the people closest to you can already tell that you are faking it, what chance do you have convincing the rest of the world? Also the fact that it's kind of suspicious that your entire politics made a 180 degree turn when you became leader. Actually that's not all that surprising. The trio has a run-in with some blind karate fighters. I see everything that you see, except I don't see like you do. I release a sonic wave from my mouth. Ah! 
There, I got a pretty good look at you. This has the pleasant effect that they keep the evil twins men and Gundula off their back for a while. Schmidt takes them to his grandfather and a friend of his who are both as crazy as he is. And yes, it is made clear that he fought for Uncle Adolf back in the day. But he comes across as the kind of guy who doesn't care what he fights for as long as he gets to fight something. So basically 90% of fascists. The captured husband sends a message with a dog, telling his beloved wife where she can find him. In war, it's the best of us who perish. They are eventually found by the German army, and so Granddaddy gets out his emergency supplies. Let's show those Americans how you really overthrow your own government. The Queen, Rainer and Schmidt escape through a back tunnel, while the old-timers run over every garden gnome in the neighborhood, ending up in the water. You drove a what into what? Inst Dr. Schmidt, who still has no clue what's going on, still thinking it's all terrorists, despite the fact it was explained to him multiple times, leads the gang to a fancy castle where the ceremony is going to take place. Rainer knows a few circus artists who will help them get inside. And all of them are gay as fuck, Which leads to Schmidt, who of course is homophobic as fuck, to get in touch with a side of him that he denied he even had. They get captured and out of nowhere the military lady reveals she is part of a worldwide secret feminist conspiracy. With new technology, men will be the ones to give birth, they will be subservient forever and women will rule the world. This is every dumb fuck shit for brains alt right incel thought condensed into a glorious snicker bar of stupid. This is brilliant. There is no other way that the arch nemesis of Instructor Schmidt, the antithesis to his thesis, could be anything but this. But what makes this even better is this film came out in 2008. Why do always, all of the time, all the most outlandish, over-the-top comedy movie scenarios become true? Not that there is a secret underground feminist conspiracy, but that there are people dumb enough to actually believe that men are being systematically erased. Her plan is to blow up the entire UN, paving the way for her forces to take over the planet. And to make sure Schmidt doesn't stop her, she gets the help of some esoteric hippie lady who bombards him with peace songs for hours, until he becomes what he has always feared. A pussy. Rainer, being the only one left, decides it's time to toughen up, save his boss, remind him who he is and go and save mankind. The bombs are lit, but Schmidt uses his pee to put it out. Could he not have just picked one of the several drinks on one of the tables? Or are they only serving high percentage alcohol at these events? Then again, if you work for the United Nations, I imagine you do need something strong to overcome the fact that you are more or less useless. Gundelor and her partner, the evil twin, try to get away, but they are stopped. Moral of the story, kill your second born. The king and queen are reunited, peace restored, and Schmidt goes back to train the super soldiers of tomorrow who will defend us from the aliens. And that was good morning, you pussies. It's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Very often when you have a comedy movie with other comedians from Germany, these other people are given a moment to shine and do what they do best, providing some variety. 
but here they are just extras. So if Schmidt's humor isn't for you, then you are already off to a bad start. Admittedly, near the end, I also had more than enough of this whole macho manly man attitude for this decade. But if the humor isn't yours, well, there's still the action sequences, which are well done. It's of course still only Hollywood on a budget. You see the tricks being used here. Like for example making cars appear faster by speeding up the video footage. But for us, that's basically Terminator 2 levels of engaging. The fact that I expected to get another what boils down to an extended comedy show sketch, but instead got some guns and car chasers thrown into the mix, was a pleasant surprise. At E Soldiers, I'm the German guy and Auf Wiedersehen.